Hey everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I've been super, super busy, and it is summertime, so I have not had much time to make videos on top of all of the other stuff. So, if you're going to make a video today for you, here we have a Heathkit SB200. It's the Harbach kit, which I have here now. I'm going to change the plate blocking cap. Band switches look good. Air variables look good. Some of the diodes had blown apart and he had put diodes underneath. I'll show those. Everything back here looks okay. I'm going to change the grid loading resistors. I'll change the mica caps. The SO239 on the output. The phenolic crap is like gone on one side, so we'll have to change that. We'll have to take out the line section piece. So here's the bottom. Here's the diodes I was talking about. Change the cap here, change the cap there. I will put the proper resistor in here. Someone paralleled, actually put three in series. Um, clean the relay, check the tolerance of the other resistors. And uh, clean the rotary switches. So I'll go over everything when it's all done. So this thing has to come out right here. That's the line section for the relative power meter. So I'll have to pull that out to get out the connector over here be fun and I will also be changing the RCA female jack for the input connector over here sorry it was backwards over here and I'll be putting it SO239 in its place the inner parts all cracked so um, that's that I'll be back when it's all done see you soon okay so I got the old board out panels undone so I always take some heat shrink, just the tip here, and I slip it over the wires, each wire for the secondary and the plate, to give it some more insulation between the wire and the metal here. So, it's always a good idea to do that. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that, install the board, and I'll be back. Stay tuned. Oh, here's the, here's the uh, completed assembly. This comes as a kit, so I have to put it together. A lot of people don't know that. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, the new filter cap assembly has been assembled and it has been installed. Okay, so the new filter cap assembly is installed. So I added the heat shrink, like I said before. This whole front panel comes off. So I've said it in another video, but I'll repeat it here again wires come through a hole on the old assembly so instead of having on solder the connections from the line breakers and the meter I cut the board and I cut the board lengthwise that allows me to pull the board out the front panel off without having to bend the side panel and the new one has like a slot so you don't have to root the wires through the hole. I'll use cap nuts on the old screws. The meter was really melted, so I had to bend the clip pieces really well, and I put a layer of silicone to help hold it in place. But um, yeah, I don't know what happened there. So I ended up tightening the, the inner nuts and um, also the outers, and I put reverse connected diodes across the meter movement to protect it. If there's ever a short on the plate while it's in the uh, plate current function. So, um, I'll show you the bottom real quick. And, uh, new resistor over here. And, uh, still lots to do. So, I'll get back to work and I will see you soon. Okay, so I got the directional coupler removed here, the bracket assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out that bad connector, put in a brand new silver plated Teflon dielectric SO239 one here, and also replace the RCA female, which is on the input side. I get my connectors from Henry over at uh, Henry Radio, uh, Ted Henry, he's an awesome guy, great, great company. So. Um, I'll go ahead and do that and uh, put it all back together. 
I'll be back soon. Okay, I'm back here with the bottom. I've constructed the soft key kit and installed it. I got rid of that string of diodes over here, put in a new 33 ohm 2 watt resistor, installed the terminal strip here, changed the two caps, two microfarad and the other one over here, cleaned the contacts on the TR relay, disassembled all of that like I showed before and it's all reinstalled new SO239 connector for the output and new and uh, put, a, put one in for the input got rid of the RCA so it's not for the bottom so, got it nice and close zip tied everything oil the fan so I noticed the problem with this when I looked at the band switch again hard to see but I'll take it up when I take it apart I'll show it it was hard to see before uh, the contact on the front rotary switch which adds padding capacitance on 80 meters the contacts were blown off on only one side so I'm gonna have to take that apart and when rebuild that switch so I'll show all of that and uh, I'll be back see you soon okay I Took out the padding cap over here. It's this rotary switch below there that has the issue. So I also took out the screw for one of the standoffs. Unsoldered the connection on the rotary switch that goes back to the TR relay and the load tuner. So trick here. I mark the shaft and I cut it. I'll cut it and then slide this portion back otherwise you have to remove the screws for the input rotor and you risk damaging it so I'll cut that slide it back and then I'll pull this whole assembly out as one after I remove this nut um, also took the nut off for this padding cap this padding caps on the load side this this uh, this rotary switch has padding capacitance on the plate side so once I get all that out I will show the contact damage and uh, I'll be back okay so I have it removed I took apart the switch cut the shaft like I said I would so I drilled the rivets out for the bad contacts the wiper portion is perfectly fine see both sides you know, people look at them they see they're black I uh, think that they've been burnt up or something. That's actually tarnish because the material is silver plated. So, okay, so I have a donor switch out of another amplifier. Contacts are perfect, also tarnished. So I will drill these rivets out and I put a screw through with a nut. Little tiny, tiny screws. And I'll put the solder over the nut to keep it from possibly flashing from a sharp edge. And uh, some people go and like they they use like uh, toothpaste or whatever or silver cleaner to clean off the tarnish. I leave it because you know when I go to I put deoxic gold on the contacts when I um, clean them, and by not cleaning it all off with you know the whole surface. It allows me to make sure that the, the contacts are actually making connection with the surface. As you'll see the little wiper mark, you know, where it's where it's actually, you know, the little thin sliver area that it's actually making the connection. So um, I will go ahead and put the switch back together and show you it when it's when that part's all set and I'll uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I ended up using a different switch. The one I had was slightly different. The contacts were a little bit longer. So I took apart a roasted SB220 switch that had some good contacts on it. As you can see, they're replaced. So tarnish doesn't inhibit the le electrical connection. It's just anything that's on the surface, dust, tar, nicotine tar, or anything like that, that would, but I, uh, I sprayed it down with deoxy gold. You can see where it's nice and shiny, where it's making connection when it's switched. The nuts on this side. 
So cut down the excess screw. And they're uh, good. So this is the ground uh, ground connection right here. So this one's far enough away. I don't have to worry about any sort of arcing issues. This these ones uh, appear to not be making good connection, and they must have been arcing, and they just uh, you know came apart. But the wiper. The wipers, as you can see, were perfectly fine. So, you know, if, if one of these had been destroyed, then this would have been toast. Oh, good. So, got, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together, and I'll reinstall it in the amplifier. As you can see, let's see where it's shiny. I'm talking about. Let's see right there. Right there and over there. So you can see it's making a nice... Solid connection when it's engaged to the contacts, to the clips. Okay, I'll be back. Sorry for the shakiness. See you soon. Okay, I put the switch back together, the assembly. So, see that line I'm talking about right there, where it's shiny? It's where the contacts pinch the stator. See the last one for 80 meter, the 80 meter padding on the load side, but um, right there. So you have to be careful with uh, stuff that's silver plated. If you go in there and you scrub it and use some sort of uh, abrasive tool, you'll actually remove the plating. You know, so the tarnish doesn't hurt anything. Um, but you know, if there's, like I said, dirt or nicotine tar or some sort of other contaminant that's that's up against the surface that will inhibit the connection and uh, you can end up with uh, an arc and then pitting and or an open you don't you just don't want that so all these contacts look good both sides it's nice and clean now I'll wipe it down a little bit but this is good to go it's good to go back in fortunately you can't buy these switches new uh, they're not available, so um, you end up rolling the dice buying a used one where you can rebuild them. Sometimes I find them new or used, you know, uh, new old stock. Very seldom do I find them, but um, if I if I have one, I'll I'll swap it out. But this one was a good candidate for a rebuild since that stator piece, the you know, the wiper, was a uh, hundred percent perfect you know, on both sides. So. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put this back in, and I'll uh, see you soon. Okay, so I'm back with the completed amplifier. This thing was a lot of work, needed a lot of stuff. So I added a standby operate switch. Customer requested one, so I added one. I'll go over, over everything I did. I know I already talked about some of it, but I will touch on every single thing in this last final video. So I had to rebuild the rotary switch for the output that adds padding capacitance on the plate tune side while it's on 80 meters. I ended up replacing the old Hunter Puff cap with a newer style High Energy Corp one. It was already all part and I have a box of them so I figured why not. Brand new Thousand Puff doorknob. These fail a lot so I put the newer style in which is the this one right here and this is the old one right here. A lot of times they come with one like this and those fill a lot. So brand new parasitic suppressor assemblies that I wound myself with 50 ohm Allen Bradley carbon comp resistors. I cleaned the other, you know, the outer rotor switch and the contacts on the inner rotor switch deoxy gold. Also the input rotor switch deoxy gold. I oiled the fan. The meter was already melted. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he had a, a light bulb in there. It was rated for too much wattage or something at some point, but new bulb, put in uh, put me, uh, reverse connected diodes across the meter, tighten the inner nuts and the outer nuts. Got the Harbach filter cap board kit. Jeff's an awesome guy over there, sells a great product, really, really nice guy. He keeps his older stuff alive by offering kits to people, so great company. So, um, 
added the heat shrink to the secondary leads for the plate supply right here to give it give them more insulation you know um, between the chassis and the wire uh, this is getting it's got new uh, penta lab tubes They're over here I pulled them out for the video awesome company can't say enough good stuff about penta over there you can see I added the shaft coupler showed that trick before in the uh, one of the last videos so I will go ahead and flip it on its side really quick. Careful. Okay. Oil the fan, like I said before. New cap, new cap. These two uh, caps, I always change those right here, right here. You got the soft key from Harbach. I put in the, a brand new 33 ohm resistor. Had that string of resistors before. Um, you know, the multimeter switch cleaned. Um, they cleaned all the contacts with the oxygen. I always do that. So I, I added this wire uh, hold down right here. Uh, problem is this wire can flap around, and then I've seen it where it's broken at the actual uh, board. So just you know, I'm very thorough when I work on stuff. Also zip tied everything nice. Used uh, silver plated uh, Teflon dielectric wire for the soft. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, standby operate. Switch, I got a ton of it, so I know it's overkill, but I have tons of it. So someone, you know, I'm sure this has been worked on multiple times in the past, but there's some insulation that's been burnt in different areas. Uh, everything's fine, and it's not a danger or anything, so I just want to point that out. When you work on something like this, uh, you should always check, you know, when you, when you get something, you'll, you know, check it out and make sure there's nothing that could be, um, could end up being a, a problem, a fire hazard or a... Um, you know, a hazard to end up, you know, that can end up damaging, uh, doing some serious damage. You know, it's best to catch it early before it gets to that point. Okay, so I took out the, uh, you know, this assembly back here so I could change the output SO239. So it has a brand new uh, Teflon dielectric silver plated SO239 which I get from I get my uh, connectors like that from Ted over at Henry Radio awesome guy I added a modified the input one from the RCA type over to a SO239 so yeah, that's that's that for that um, let's see what else did I do before it goes I'm going to change these so they both match just very anal stuff I want everything to be nice nice so let's where you strap it from it's on 120 right now so that's where you change it from 120 to 220 so you know, this assembly is for the relative power meter I touched up on the soldering here I had to unsolder that when I took the output network I'm, I'm sorry when I took the uh, band switch assembly out so that's soldered nice nice again and uh, I think that about covers everything. Also added the three screws that were missing over here. And tightened up on some hardware. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. It's amprepairguy.com, 203-892-4119. That's 203-892-4119. Here's an old parasitic, even though it looks okay. I always change them. I have hundreds of them, so you know these shift in value over time, and it doesn't take too long to wind brand new ones. So take care. Seventy-three. Sorry, I forgot to add a uh, few things here. I also changed the grid loading resistors. One here, one here, and these two caps. One here, one here, and I also compressed all of the clips for the sockets. And clean them with the oxygold. So I haven't been making a lot of videos. I've just been so busy. I have another 922 here, an AL82 here, and a couple other amps on their way. So it's summertime. I do a lot of outside stuff, but you know I wanted to get a video up. People contact me asking where I'm at and all that. Just been here busy working. I am here, but uh, I don't make my I don't make money putting videos on YouTube. I don't have my channel set up for that. I just put them on here for educational purposes and to show my work. Um, that's about it. So uh, it takes a lot of time. As you can see, you know, video after video I have to 
stop what I'm doing. I have to put the soldering iron down and you know put pick the camera up and you know um, shoot a video and that uh, slows me down here so um, I make them now and then but uh, I am busy here working and if you need an amplifier repaired feel, feel free to give me a call like ampreparegar.com 203-892-4119 catch you later 73